Hello, everyone. Good morning from New York. I kind of hear myself. Hello, good morning and good evening, Philippines. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome, welcome to our DMP election. And today we will be talking about licensing. Well, I'm waiting for my other co-host. <laughs> We're waiting for a nurse, uh, for nurse Paul and Nurse A. We're having a hard time connecting. We're having a technical issue here. Anyway, so I would like to welcome each one of you. Please share our live today. So everyone will be aware what we're talking about today. Share for your friends, Facebook. This is a very uh, hot topic. If you want to work and live in the USA as a nurse, you have to learn more about licensing. And as you know, we have a fitly state in the US. Good morning, good evening. Hi, good morning from Texas. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, good morning. Please don't forget to share so everyone will benefit from this topic. Licensing, you cannot work without endless. So if you want to know and make sure you're going the right way, so you're not going to wait for money, time, effort, I encourage all of you to please share. Everyone will be um, knowledgeable with no respect. While I'm still waiting for my <laughs> co host over here <laughs> on a Sunday morning in New York. Okay. Mm hmm. So today we're going to talk about licensing, and we have a lot of topics that me and my host pay will discuss about CNFNS. And as always, I have my notebook with me, so I will not going to forget. And I'll make sure I cover everything, and our nurse all will discuss about FLEX preparation, review and all that stuff while we are providing links. We're going to provide you some resources. We can always go back and check them. Okay, guys, can you tell us where you're from? We have one from Texas and uh, people are coming. Thank you. Thank you so much for gracing your time with us. Let me get my friends over here. <laughs> Meanwhile, why don't you comment and type your question for today? Okay. Here we go. Welcome, each and everyone. Welcome to DMP a lot. And today we will be talking about licensing, as I said earlier. We will give you some enlightenment, tips, and tricks how to make the application and plan easier on your part. Today we will dive into the importance of nursing prep license for a very important step in the journey of healthcare professional. Nursing license for is not merely a formality, it's a commitment to upload the highest standards of patient care, ethics, and professionalism. It's a testament to the dedication and competence of those who chose this novel profession. We will explore the importance of nursing license for the requirements, the process, and the significance it holds for both aspiring and seasoned nurses, as well as travel nurses too. 
Whether you are a nursing student aspiring to become a licensed or experienced nurse or a travel nurse, look on state current. So the further you go, let's drive it to the world of nursing, licensing, work competence, mix, comparison, and professionalism, and of course, mix patient care. While waiting for my other co-host, look for nurse Paul and uh, nurse pay. And I believe what our nurse Paul is coming in. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, Dr. One second. Let, let me, good morning. Let me just set up my camera. Something's wrong with my computers today. I have two computers. One of them would not want to boot. <laughs> All, right. All right. Yep, yep. Hi. Hi for Irwin from North Carolina and family. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Please don't forget to share, like, share the knowledge or the wealth. If you're planning to work here in the U.S., this will be beneficial to you. And, and if you're also a traveler. Okay, so while waiting for our co-host, let me start. First, I will discuss the successful application process. I know for everyone's asking, I would like to work in the U.S., Miss Anna. So how can I work in the U.S.? I graduated my um, nursing, so I want to work in the U.S. So what will I do? So if you want to work in the U.S., you have to have a license. You kind of practice here without license. So I came from a Philippine, so I will make, make a little comparison for you to be able to understand more. So in the Philippines, our license for a uh, bug is PRC, or professional, regulatory. Um, uh, that's the equivalent of the NLX uh, here in the U.S. And as a nurse, you cannot work without uh, NLX. It's an uh, equivalent of license. So, who, where do I go, Ms. Anna? We, uh, grow or company. So we have NCSBN. What is NCSBN? It's a National Council of State Boards of Nursing. Remember, nurses or healthcare workers, we have it in state. Okay, and those states, they are a member of National Council, and the National Council or NCSBN play a crucial role in the field of nursing regulation in the U.S. They uh, regulate the nursing license for. So what is NLEX? NLEX is a standard guide examination for licensing uh, nurses in the U.S. You cannot work without it. I kept repeating that. It's a computer test. And who are eligible? Eligibility for of course, the nurses that you graduated. So let me clarify this. Um, if you are here already in the U.S., the application or NLEX differs or vary. If you are an IEN in our nationally educated graduate, like um, I, I was like me, I graduated from the Philippines, the process and the steps are a little complicated, but doable and possible. But however, for those who are in the U.S., Americans, or born here, it's very straightforward. Uh, I will be opening my topic with the girl who are not from the U.S., the foreign graduates. Okay, so in order for you to have a successful application for the NCLEX, first, Ms. Anna, which is the easiest step or which is the easiest step? So as I mentioned, there are 50 states. I know U.S. United States of nurse of America, but the Board of Nursing are not united. They have their own requirements, they have their own eligibility, and it varies. And uh, from what I refer, the top five or top six most that is to apply in New York, uh, Connecticut, uh, Northern Mariana, New Mexico, right, Carpal? Yep, yep. Right, right. And yep. uh, so first, uh, if you're working in a state, for example, you apply in an agency, 
and we were assigned in a, in New York or in Northern Maria or other states. It doesn't necessarily mean that you could apply your uh, endpoints in there. You have to work smart and not hard, according to my friend A. So choose a state that will pay for, for what you need, which is to take the endpoints class. For example, I chose uh, New York. You're going go to go to the uh, nursing website, NYSED. You are going to check the requirements for eligibility. So as a foreign graduate, they will ask your school documents. They will ask for your license. Uh, for example, like me, I have a license for ERC. But, uh, but uh, let me correct myself, a New York doesn't really require ERC. So that's one of the advantages of applying your eligibility in uh, New York. But I always encourage those who graduated nursing to always, always take the nursing license for where you're from because it will offer you more options, it will be, uh, it will be more beneficial for you, and it will not limit your capacity or your opportunity to apply for an endless. Uh, for your community event, um, you are going to wait for the Work of nursing to be eligible. Now, a lot of people ask me how much, Ms. Anna, how much? It really depends. I will keep you from New York as an example. Uh, eligibility is 143 application is one hundred uh only dollar plus. It can be like eight years ago. So but they will always upgrade it in your website. So first, who's a state? Comply with the requirement. The requirement are you finding your school document to make sure uh, you have uh, your document ready and you know in the Philippines or in, in your country, it's time. They will, ask, they will ask for your transcript or your, um, uh, what do you call this, your experiences. And some states require fingerprinting. But from what I remember in New York, they never ask for my fingerprint. Some states require for you to ask for um, jurisprudence. I believe in Texas, right? For all, you have to ask yes, the jurisprudence. Yes. That is but correct. in New York, you have to ask your um, um, infection control and child abuse. And during my, my time, a CVS uh, from CVS was required. But now I'm going to know that the answer was straightforward. And then, uh, are you? You're going to follow up. It will take a while before New York is the fastest one, but because of the volume it, it have, so now it takes a little slower. So you have to really put an eye on your email or follow up if you feel like it's taking longer than the usual. When you have the eligibility, then you're going to have an authorization to pass. So let me repeat for the state. It doesn't really mean that it's the state we're going to work. Comply with the requirement. I encourage, I suggest for you to print out the requirement so you can go over it one by one and you're not going to miss uh, any items that they require. It will save you time, it will save you effort. And, and there are so many other applicants, you are not the only nurse applying for the eligibility. So make sure you're not going to miss anything. And also get to know how to acquire a document from your school from your licensing bagley, for example, if you're the, from the Philippines. In PRC, there's a lot of um, application also going on in there. From what I believe, uh, main PRC in, in Manila, there, oh, there's no available schedule. So all of these minor steps will uh, make a huge impact in your application. And uh, in order for it to be avoided, you have to be one step forward, so get to know all of this process, documents, the fees. And now, some other states also require fingerprinting, some other states require criminal background. So, and then you're going to pay for it, like what I said, it varies by state. Now that you have it, you have an agency authorization of text. You can apply for every request uh, from Board of Nursing, from NCSBN. Now you're going to Person View. That's where you're going to schedule your class. Person View, they're interconnected in terms of um, 
up for you back your requirement for the Borgo nursing and Smith in the end, gonna get rid of you, you're gonna push a state location. When they put the class for our consents from the Philippines, they have no available it was not one of the uh, I think location yet, so I have to go to Hong Kong. Now again, we have an ill in and we're always book up for so me sure you plan ahead. It's all about planning, it's all about preparing and getting to know all of this minor stuff that will play a big role in or making your uh application and aspects smooth and successful. And up where you have the schedule. You have to pay again, so uh, it's a big investment. I'm not going to lie, you're going to spend money, you're going to spend effort, time for it. So make sure you take this one, you have to have a lot of discipline. I also suggest for me um, email address specifically for your uh, employees. All the documents for your school that are preparing. So, it's not going to be all over the place and else all spattered. And make sure you're always check your email and make sure the information in your documents are accurate. You're not missing anything. So when I when I applied before, my original uh, state was California. And California, is, the requirements are very <laughs> beautiful, like uh, New York. But then California, before I forgot, there are other states that Required for you to have a social security. So that's another um, disadvantage of California from a uh, point of view. So that's why a lot of people, a lot of nurses are applying to New York because you're going to have to have a social security. And uh, for your information, you cannot have a social security if you are not here in the US and if you're not working. I, I receive a lot of people. Uh, messages to me, mom, where can I find the social security number? And I always ask them, are you still in your country? Yes, ma'am. So you can never have it. So I suggest be smart, choose a state that will work on your end or have the endless application. So what are the common errors? How to have a successful application? Uh, prevent this error. Number one, incomplete application. You're always in a hurry. You're not reading the instruction well. Reading is a must. Reading is a key. Okay? Will not be in a hurry. If you need to have a highlighter, use a highlighter. And second, incorrect is If you're paying a uh, lesser than the amount, it will not be personal. And it's a dollar. It's a lot of money. So make sure you're your friend uh, correct corrective. Some states require you accept also. Some states you can pay online. Some uh, states require you to have a credit card or a debit card. And uh, another thing, missing deadlines. So remember, or the one that I gave an example earlier in New York, you have to submit an application for your school. And then you have to submit an uh, document from ERC. Or if you're going to have a year, it's also fine. But schools, uh, they have a lot of application and backlog too. So now it lapses. So you have to be on top of those deadlines. And uh, name discrepancy. Do not forget if you have a letter I or E, make for it's I, it's readable. Okay, you cannot say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I put the wrong letter. No, it will cost you a lot. And criminal background uh, check issues. For all, uh, in class, do you have a criminal background, right? Yes, uh -huh. it's required. It's, it's, required. Um, it's a standard for compact license states to do criminal background. So if you're going to be in a compact license states, um, all of them will do criminal background check. So I mean, when I apply in New York, uh, we only require fingerprint, that's what I remember. And in, uh, yeah. in California, I'm sorry, we only require um, fingerprinting. And in New York, we do not require any criminal background or fingerprinting. That's why go to New York State. That's me as I live here. <laughs> and then providing all information, you cannot do that, okay? Make sure you have a correct information, your school, your year. Because they will ask also document from your school and they will compare it. Like, I'm a proof, you say this, and, but your school is saying this. 
okay, Monet Public Library Health. And uh, not review the application. Okay, I'm going to sign it in. No, you have to review, go over it one more time, over and over again. Set your spelling, the birth, the year, and uh, the address, and the email address. And failure to verify the eligibility. So a lot of people are like, I've been waiting and waiting, Miss Anna. I sent a lot of emails to the Board of Nursing. I haven't received it. But you were not verifying it. The Board of Nursing requiring asking for more information, more documents. So uh, one of my, before when I used to have a business for years of practicing, we have to go all over again because the uh, Board of Nursing of New York failed to verify her eligibility because we have some discrepancy with her grade of birth. So it really matters. And in complete support and document. Now, the Board of Nursing will require your school to submit the document, not you as an applicant. Your school must submit it. It must be signed, filled with the school field. Okay, the Board of Nursing will find out if it came from the applicant. Do not try your luck. Do not save some money. Oh, mom, I'm going to pay extra 500 you know, if the school will use the career, but you're going to be safer than sorry. Okay, that, uh, number 11, delay in registering for the exam. Now remember, everything has an expiration date, as I said. Everything has a time limit. So in New York, the eligibility, thank God, has no expiration. But if you apply in other states, there's an expiration. And, it, and if they require the PRC, your license from the Philippines, it, it's expired, we have to go all over again. So make sure everything's up to date and make sure that the deadlines are, you're meeting it. And number 12, not taking records. When I was applying 10 years ago, I always want to have a copy. I always auto copy it. So whatever will happen, I have a support document. I can always reach out to the Board of Nursing to NCSBN. Now you, you can screenshot it, you can scan it. Save it in the F, work smart, okay, every regular nurses. So, um, for all, a lot of people are asking me, I know you're paying for my math, call up license. Call up license, so what, what is it? So now we're 49 states in the U.S. And unfortunately, New York is not one of them. <laughs> call up license or the license that, um, or in a, the latest one who has in um, Pennsylvania. This is uh, when you have a uh, one license, but you can practice with the other uh, license uh, But you have to reside in that state. Uh, what I'm trying to say, for example, I'm from New York, right? New York is not one of them. And, mom, does it work that like, if I want to apply in uh, Texas or in Pennsylvania, where up at license? Does it mean I can also work in other states with um, a license? No, you have to live and reside in that state. It will be beneficial if you're a traveling nurse. Do you have a um, at license for all? Yes. You have one, so, right? Uh, yeah, let me explain um, mm, more. about my <laughs> license. But yeah, for, for our viewers that are um, um, here, good morning, by the way. Can you please do us a favor if you can share the show to everyone mm -hmm. and tell us where you're coming from so we can acknowledge you guys. That way we can have an interactive, very interactive show. Um, Anna has um, shared very good information about the NCLEX, but we would love to know what thoughts you have mm -hmm. and what questions you may have so we can address them as well. But COPAC license is your ability to practice in other states without getting licensed to that state as explained earlier there are 50 states and for you to practice you must have license for each of the states because it's a federal type of government which means each state is sovereign each state has its own rules so you cannot just jump to another state and practice mm -hmm. as a nurse even if it's one country you must have a license the compact license um decreases this um problem by giving you the ability to work to other states 
without having that license. So if I'm from Texas, I can work in other 30 plus states without having a license in those states. The only thing that you need to remember is you must be a resident of one of the compacts. Mm -hmm. So if I'm from Texas, I'm a resident of Texas, that gives me the ability to um, do compact, all right? So, or work in compact states. If I'm not from Texas and say I'm from California, which is not part of compact, and I get a Texas license, it's called single state license. Mm -hmm. So there are two types of licenses. The single state license, if you're not a resident, and the compact license if you are a resident. So if you are not a resident of one of the compacts, you are not eligible for compact licenses. Hi, Ms. Jean. You. Hi, Ms. Ms. Jean. Ms. Jean is, Ms. Jean is um, watching us today. And uh, Brent is also watching us from Texas. Gumagor, gumagor. Gumagor and smuggling. And for clarification for our non-Filipino um, viewers, because mm -hmm. um, Anna has uh, been able to process um, Filipino um, pro processing, PRC is, um, she kept uh, mentioning earlier, mm -hmm. PRC. Uh, PRC is your nursing uh, um, governing body in the, in the Philippines. So she was pertaining to nursing license for the Filipinos, all right? Um, each country is different. There are mm -hmm. countries that require license. There are countries that do not have licenses. It's called diploma mm -hmm. or uh, your bachelor's degree is, is equivalent to your ability to practice as an RN and you don't need a license. So verify with your own board of nursing or governing body for nursing in your country if you need a license or not to practice. If you don't need a license to practice, you just send your diploma to the to the US, to whichever state you apply for. And uh, if you need a license, then you must have that license from the country where you graduated and where you um, came from uh, before you apply for the US. That will make the process faster. And for those who are confused, NCSBN is a state board, National Council State Boards of Nurses. and uh, Eligibility is when you apply for the NCLEX and the board approves you. ATT is your permit to take the exam. Pearson View is, so NCSBN makes the exams. Pearson mm -hmm. View delivers the exam to the computer. So two different organizations. So it's a multiple step process, complicated. I know. People would need help to do that. Sometimes some people are detail oriented and they can do it themselves. Um, see what works best for you, but mm -hmm. be very thorough. Anna shared multiple steps, how to prevent errors on application and what makes it easier, what, what will make it easier for you to get that application process going smoothly. I summarizing now. I always, I always ask in a long way. And in my notebook, I still miss something. I, you know, so that, that's a very uh, nice an easy way how to describe the process of admit. So as you know, it requires time to learn and money or finance because you're going to pay the eligibility for the exam and for the venue and the person view. So make sure that uh, you are doing it correctly to save yourself from losing money and time. And like the partner all said, when, when I did it, I did it DIY. I did it by myself. but. It's non-stop reading, non-stop researching, and during my time for all, we have no, uh, we have the aura already, but not like nowadays, we have Facebook, we have social media, you have YouTube that you can ask for, so please utilize those uh, resources, and NCSBN, they have a step-by-step, -step, uh, I will post the link later, you can also email and send them a uh, Letter, email, they will send you a copy of uh, how to do it. But now everything's available uh, in the website. So thank you for all. And uh, we yeah. have. And they can also, questions. they can actually check. NCSBN created a website specifically mm -hmm. for NCLEX. I don't know okay. if moderators can flash this, but um, the website is called NCLEX.com. So it's super easy to remember. NCLEX.com. This is a website specifically created by NCSBN for test preparers. It has everything from state board. Um, thank state you for board, flashing uh, that. Thank you for flashing it, that. It, 
Oh, it's Kay. You're driving. <laughs> Kay, you're driving. <laughs> hey, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, my God. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've been trying to get in for the past more than 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess somebody hacked my computer already, and it's blocking my access to all, oh, the, uh, all the webcam and, and mic. I'm like, what is going on? I mean, I never had that technical problem ever in my PC, but... Um, Sorry, today I said my husband's sleeping and said, you know what? <laughs> he said, I'm going to the car and I'm going to go there and, and I can hear you loud and clear without problem. Right, okay. Right. Okay. We're, we're, we're losing you a bit. We're, we're, we're but, losing you a bit. Oh, you're losing I, me. All right. Um, sorry yeah, about I, that. Um, I think that there's a feedback. Sorry for though. having technical problem. Oh, you can hear the feedback. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's okay. Yes. It's okay. All right, so good morning, everyone. Sorry for joining in later. Um, again, I was having technical problem um, in my PC, so I have to jump in my car so I can have my own space here. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but here I am. Um, I just want to add something about uh, what Anna said earlier about your licensing. Mm -hmm. For me, license is actually an investment, okay? Having those licenses can give you opportunities to work in different states of your choice. Having that ready ahead of time, it gives you a leverage to have the freedom and in control of your career. So I do recommend everyone, um, you know, writing your goals and setting where you really want to work. You know, write down your goals, identify those places where you want to work, you know, at least two to, you know, give us at least two to three places and then write down the reasons why you want to work there. It's be um, I recommend this to people because not a lot of people would enjoy their first year, second year, and sometimes they would be locked up in a, in a situation where they feel like this is not working for them. They don't have mm -hmm. support system. And... I always tell them if you once you feel like this is not for you, don't wait till the last minute. Mm -hmm. Consider this license as an investment. Mm -hmm. um, as a traveling nurse, I always tell people that you know at least you have to have two to three licenses in different states because you don't want your success to be dictated by recruiters wherever they want to tell to send you. You don't want your success to be dictated with what's in your hand available. You want to be um, dictated. You're, you want your success to be dictated how you want it done. The you know What's best for you? Because opportunities are there everywhere, but it does not mean those opportunities are actually good for you and for your goals in life. So think of licenses as an investment. If this license can give me to my goals, it is a it is worth paying for, even though I'm paying right now um three states at a time, <laughs> <laughs> four states at a time as a travel nurse. Um, actually, I do um keep one license, which is New York, um, New York New York license as active for, you know, ever since I got here in the United States. Even though I have not been working in New York for a while, but when pandemic hit, even I was outside New York, I was able to help back and and go to those places because new york is very hard to get a license california mm -hmm. is very hard to get a license mm -hmm. it's not easy all other one. states will be easier all than this <laughs> california and new york are are your hardest states if those are harder to get i will not keep it inactive mm -hmm. um huh. and right now i'm in maryland i overlook because i have not worked in maryland for a while and then it said, oh, you have to go um, do your finger scanning again, your fingerprinting and stuff. Oh, my God. You know, because I missed to to activate those things, then it's a hassle. But it's not as hassle as California and New York. So mm -hmm. I would definitely, <laughs> definitely recommend you guys um, keeping those important state licenses active. And the compact state is very helpful. It gives opportunity to everyone to move around especially during this uh, shortage of nursing. Right. And yeah, like I was saying, everything is available for you guys in NCLEX.com. It's a website created by NCSBN. Um, it has all the state boards, um, websites or links. It has the 
test preparation, you know, the processing and all that. But we can also flash the map of the, um, what's this? Com the compact. Uh, mm -hmm. So they would understand the compact. So with me being a resident of Texas, I can practice on all states that are color blue. Blue, yeah. And I think PA is also joining soon. They're already yep. on uh, um, Rache. process, right? It's um, it's light blue, which means we're just waiting for implementation. Washington State over the West Coast is has a pending legislation, which means it can be approved for compact or not. So which means if I'm from Texas and I have the compact license, I have the ability to move to all these states to practice temporarily. If I move mm. permanently, then I would still need to get a license in that state. In that state. So for example, if I go to Arizona um, for a temporary contract, like travel nurse contract or agency contract, or I'm just going to try it out for two months before I decide if I want to be there permanently, I do not have to apply for Arizona license. I can just use my Texas license, which is under compact um, and practice there. Now, if you're not a resident of any of the compact and you apply for a license in this state, you do not get a compact license. Mm -hmm. You only get a single state license or SSL. You can verify that in your nurses.com profile. But with me, because I'm compact, I'm able to work in this state, but I also have extra um, licenses Life. in <laughs> California <laughs> and uh, Hawaii because I practiced in Hawaii. I was going to practice in California, but uh, I, I eventually um, ventured into practicing my NP um, license instead. But um, I don't think California and New York would ever give no. it to compact. They have so <laughs> many nurses and yeah. uh, they want to they be able to control the flow of nursing and of course um i hate to say it but it's money for the state boards if there is Happening. a comeback they would lose the, those money those income from application processes because the money will be distributed to all the compact and i don't think they like that um but i think yeah. paul i'd like to um comment on that i think new york is starting to boil it i'm not 100 yeah. percent sure yeah but i, I do believe new york has mm -hmm. started like it's not going to be instant like before new jersey has enacted to be part of the compact but when yeah. i called they said yeah we pass it but we yeah. have not implemented it so no, there's no, no, a two different phase of Impl um, enacting it and implementing it. So even if the state says, "Oh, we we are we enacted or we passed to be compact," it does not mean that you have already um, access to work in those um, states. So you will have to ask, "Is it already implemented?" So you right. have to ask those states because, like in New York, they're working on it, and then the next yeah. phase will be enacting it, and then the third phase will be implementing it. Right. Right. You're right, Pray. Uh, from what I remember, I, you know, months ago, I was uh, in, in the aura, uh, the new governor here, uh, we were in the process of talking about it, about the, but it, like what you said, it will take time. I hope that that got old when it happens. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, all about, it's all about legislation. So if you live in these yeah. states that are not compact, write to your congressman. Um, yeah. That will help mobilize the nurses during, like, during the pandemic. What they actually did, New York and California, they had to do emergency um, authorization mm -hmm. to practice. Even Illinois, I have an emergency temporary license to Illinois um, because they were not part of the compact. Imagine if there was compact, there is no need for emergency authorization for licenses mm -hmm. because you can just navigate freely because it's already. Um, compact, but um, that was what happened. So it's just an extra red tape. But you know, we cannot move um, without proper legislation, and it's all about legislation in the U.S. I guess it's all the same in other countries. So that's what you need to advocate for in your state. I currently do not have this problem because <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the compact state. As long as I live in Texas. <laughs> you know, I had a problem with New Jersey licensing one time. Yeah. I was already um, licensed in New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Maryland, and I was applying for my New Jersey license. And I applied for endorsement. I've been living right. in the United States more than 15 years, and New Jersey State told me, 
oh, you have to go back to your country to verify <laughs> your credentials. I'm like, <laughs> but my New York already verified that and endorsed. Mm -hmm. Massachusetts did the same. All the states endorsed and and they said, am I applying for initial application or endorsement? And they told me, right. no, it's an endorsement. But it's endorsement is making me go back all the way mm -hmm. to Philippines and go to PRC, go to my board regulation, go to my school. It's It was chaotic. And right. I'll be honest, there are states that are very hard to apply, not because yeah. that it, they're hard, but sometimes when you're a foreign nurse, it's harder when you're a foreign graduate. So mm -hmm. New yeah. Jersey is not hard to apply when you're local graduate. Yeah. But when you're foreign, it's really hard. I think those are the states where there's, you know, I think rise of number of fraudulent documents or fraudulent practices. So when you go to those places where it's very high population and there are a lot of instances that that fraudulent documentation or graduation documents were submitted, I think those states become very tough. Not not to domestic nurses, but I believe in in foreign graduates. So, if you are planning to go to different states and you might need to transfer your certification, I mean your license. Let's say even if you're you belong to a compact state and moving to a new state, and then you will have to reapply that. Yeah. Yeah. Keep in mind that if you're a foreign graduate or for, with foreign uh, foreign credentials, you might have longer processing versus those local American Ooh. graduates. So yeah. just keep may, that in mind and make sure you put that in your timeline when you plan yeah. to. May, may I just add, for example, if you are in a compact license state, for example, I'm from Texas, right? And mm -hmm. I want to move to another compact, let's say, give me a state. Um, and Colorado. A, that, that's part of compact. Oh, right? no, oh, New York. Part of, part, no, part, part of compact. I, uh, com uh, how about, uh, yeah. yeah, Maryland is a compact state. Maryland, yeah. So you say, for example, I need to move to Maryland, all right? Um, the process is actually much smoother. If I move to Maryland, I have to apply for Maryland license because I'm moving residency. It's still part mm -hmm. of compact, but because I'm moving residency, I have to apply for Maryland. If I apply for Maryland, the process is much smoother, actually, because I was originally... Um, license in a compact oh, state. Compact. With my compact state license, Texas, I did my credential evaluation when I applied for Texas license, right? So that credential evaluation is part of my nurse's profile. Mm -hmm. That way, when I do the nurse's background uh, verification to transfer that information to Maryland, Maryland will see that I already did my credential evaluation and that Texas already reviewed it, which is another NCSBN um, compact state. Um, they would not require me to do credential evaluation anymore. That, that's the beauty. If you're part of Compact and you did your credential evaluation, it will become permanent file with your nurses. You can actually ask nurses and it will say, yes, mm -hmm. you did your credential evaluation. And it's part of it. It's part of the rule of Compact to have um, standardized legal requirements. Um, there are five. I forgot all five of them, but one of it is your credential evaluation. Another one is criminal background check. And another one is um, your um, um, graduated from nursing. So there, there are five. So those are standards, which means it's become it becomes part of your actual nurses. Nurses is your online verification for license profile. That when it gets transferred to another state, you'll see that. The only issue is when you move out of compact. That's when they're going to require credential evaluation again. So um, when I applied for New York, it took me eight months. They wanted credential evaluation. They did. New York does not allow third-party credential evaluation. No. They evaluate mm -hmm. credentials themselves in-house, um, and that used to be the thing before CGMS becomes the became the dominant um, credential evaluation player. Um, but New um, California does that. Um, I'm sorry, did I say New York? I meant California. So California does that in-house. I think New York would still require credential verification services from um from cgfns it is you can you can do it or you cannot but mm -hmm. if, if it were me if i'm the new applicant i would tell you this i would tell you this. i would do the credential evaluation now all right before mm -hmm. i left the philippines i did a credential evaluation so when i moved to the states i didn't have problems anymore because i already got it done 
um, and it's much easier for me to apply, except California, because they do it in-house. So at least you already have the credential evaluation on record, something like that. That's the most complicated part. To, that's to prevent fraud. Um, mm -hmm. I think Kay will touch up on that later if we still have time. <laughs> Yeah, but the licensing so alone is so, yeah, yeah, the CGFNS and preventive fraud and all that. Um, yep, I just was just reading the news last night that, um, they were, um, um, the, the you know, the fraudulent diplomas from Florida, they were yeah. able to put four people in jail already, and they're the owners oh, wow. of the school, yeah, yeah. um, so. So they're also cracking down from within the country, not only outside the U.S. But I'm going to tell you that outside the U.S., there are really fraudulent school, schools. So that kind of um, messes the game for everybody. That's why you can understand why the states have to be very, very strict with requirements. And it's understandable. It's, it's a hassle, but it's for the protection of everybody. It's, after all, it's, it's nursing. And we need to make sure that people are really educated um, to be nurses because you don't want to be working with someone who has questionable educational background. Right? Imagine if I'm working in the ER and I see someone uh, and I've had a couple of coworkers. I'm like, are you, are you really a nurse? Let me go back to my computer and check the nurses because maybe you're not, you're not who, you, who you are saying you are, right? <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah, when I actually got that message for uh, Florida licenses, I mean, Florida school fraud being fraudulent, I'm like, oh, it's not like a wow, like, oh, my God, you know, because I feel like, uh oh, I've seen some in the Philippines, <laughs> happen, right? I've right. seen some in other countries that have been doing this and. And I'm very happy, though, that they are cracking it here in the United States because it's really, you know, human lives that is at risk. You don't mess up with people's mm -hmm. lives here. Right. Um, you're hit, you're fooling two people, not only the nurses, you're victimizing the patients, the end patients. Too. Yeah, huh? So it's very, diff um, very difficult to, to comprehend how these people actually are, you know, can stomach it. But I have personally worked side by side with fraudulent nurses. Somebody told me when I was working, hey, Kay, um, you know, they, this person in this room said um, that she worked in this hospital, but didn't you work in that hospital too? I said, yeah, when? And then I said to her, uh, yeah, during those the times that she mentioned, I worked there. I don't know her at all, <laughs> at all. And I can ask those people who have I worked. And they verified that she never worked in that hospital. She she um, fraudulently um, did her credentials. For some reason, I don't know how she get away with it. But all of a sudden, she got missing in the middle of the shift. She ran away when people <laughs> when she probably figured out that people found out that she's fraudulent. Um, and there was an investigation that what that happened there, and they said. Um, that she was never a nurse. <laughs> she was a psych patient from somewhere and fraudulently copied somebody's credentials. And for some reason, it was able to to pass through agencies. Um, mm -hmm. And it was really alarming. <laughs> so yeah. I, and the, I the, wouldn't the problem, be surprised. <laughs> yeah, the problem here is um, when you check the nurse's report, there, there are no pictures. So exactly. people, mm -hmm. people can like, I, I mean, I always get the Texas letter, the Texas Board of Nursing letter every month. They still do it snail mail. And they would mm -hmm. always show people that have fraudulently used someone's license and pretended it's them because they have the same name. Mm -hmm. um, and same so birth that, like, oh. Yeah, that's a problem. I, I don't think there can any, there can, there can anyone be Paul Bill Yuan because it's such a specific name and such a Filipino <laughs> name. Nobody My name is very like. common. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and during the pandemic, right? Okay, I don't know if you have uh, encountered this, but I really worked with some sketchy nurses that I'm like, I, are you are you really? Look, I work in the ER, right? We always say in the ER, we know if you're from ER just by how you move and how you talk because mm -hmm. ER is such a different world where you have to be able to practice by yourself, but also be able to join with the team. And it's different when you say, I have 10 years ER experience. Uh, 
you just don't say those things. So you see you in action, you know, because ER is, it's, it's a wild world, you know. It's a wild world. Yeah, wild world. It's very chaotic. You can have definitely a flavor of everything, right? So it's hard to fake that for me. So I guess it's, it's, it comes with every specialty. I guess if you guys in the, are in the OR, you would also know. Yeah. Someone's yeah, actually right, saying who they are. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I worked in an imposter so, in pandemic and we right. were doing a trauma. And yeah. this person said that she was an OR nurse. And as soon as we opened the belly, she almost threw up. I'm like, <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you cannot. She's not from this. the OR. <laughs> right. no. I have I have experience too, like this nurse bragging, oh I work in a trauma hospital so and so from this three. But when we have a, a trainee, it's like what if bone was you know the simple thing, the simple supply or herb yeah. that they cannot really comprehend and I was like right. I thought you have a ten years, twenty years over experience. And it turned out we all know that we were in a outpatient but more on I patients, you know. I yeah. mean <laughs> it's not all. Yeah, I worked with the nurse who said he he has like fifteen years ER experience and he's doing travel nursing and he was earning hundred and twenty an hour. And then he started getting stroke patients, right? Because with travel nursing or like agency nurses, you, you you're lucky if you get a day of orientation. Yep. Um, so <laughs> yeah. So within the first week, um, he got a, his his first stroke code stroke patient, and it was bothering me the whole time while I was busy with my own septic patients and all that. And it's like, bro, how can I do this, bro? What am I gonna do next, bro? What am I gonna check? Oh, what am I gonna tell them in the report? Um, I was like, dude, um, it's stroke protocol. So we do this, we do that, we do that. I was like, have you not done stroke before? Because I was already getting like so confused because of the way he was acting. And he said, oh, it's because we do it differently where I work. I was like, <laughs> dude, like stroke protocol is the same everywhere. We just yeah. follow the standard, like the guideline. Like, I don't know what's different. I was like, you, you start your TPA, this is how you mix your TPA. It's, it's, it's the same everywhere. And um, I started getting suspicious. I had to report him to charge. I was like, hey, keep an eye on this guy because I'm worried about the stroke patient. But um, I think after a week, he never came back or something. Um, we learned that he was not really, oh, I mean, he's been an ER nurse. I mean, he, he his last ER experience was probably like more than five years ago. He was working mm. as a jail nurse. So everything was probably new to him. I don't know. But um, just be honest, you know, like it, it will be, you, you'll get more sympathy and people will work with you if you're honest. But if he claims yeah. something that you're not, then all of these pressure will go to you, the burden, you know, and um, the worst part is not even you pretending something you're not, right? It's actually <laughs> the lives of the patients, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I'm very big with patient advocacy when I'm at work. So whenever I have sketchy nurses, I have, I have a nurse training before, um, I was telling her because it's a kiddo, so we were, we were going to give Tylenol suppository. And she said, uh, oh, I've never done that. I was like, you've never given a suppository? <laughs> like, <laughs> what's, what school did you graduate from? Because I want to know, like, did they not teach you guys how to how to do a suppository for a kiddo? It's a tiny suppository, so something like that. But, um, but um, yeah, fraudulent schools, it's crazy. Like, when I think about it, yeah, right. They, the news blew up last year. When I think about it, I was like, "Ooh, some of them I might have worked with during the pandemic," because there were thousands of nurses from everywhere coming in for COVID response. Mm -hmm. Some of them are really, really sketchy. And I heard uh, some of them are actually went, went for ICU because ICU always gets the highest bill during the pandemic. They would uh -huh. get ten dollars more, fifteen dollars more. Oh my God, I, I'm an ER nurse. I would never step into the ICU, period. Um, because I know my limits and I don't want to kill somebody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. But, but these, <laughs> these nurses have the guts. Like, oh, I'm going to do ICU for yeah. the money. Yeah, they oh didn't, they're very risk taker. Not only risk taker, I think they're 
you know, they're desperate. Some people are just financially challenged and desperate mm-hmm. and they will just yeah. do everything and they were going to do this decision recklessly. Losing right. Um, anyway, I'm, I want to move forward with the CGFNS um, yeah, yeah. with the overview for foreign graduates. CGFNS, your commission for graduate of foreign nurse. Um, previously, um, they're the one that will give you at least a certificate so you can practice temporarily in the United States as a Filipino. For other countries, this is still happening because the history of that, um, a lot of people have traveled to NCLEX um, exam sites outside their countries and people would spend so much money for airfare, for Mm -hmm. accommodation, for NCLEX exam. And then people would fail. And there's a lot of failures in NCLEX. So... America said, you know, for people, so people will not lose that opportunity to um, to lose those exams and lose all those monies. Why don't we create something that will help them gauge first if they will pass NCLEX? So CGFN has created a CGFN certification, which will give you an estimate if you're going to pass or fail the NCLEX. So you don't have to waste all those money going to those NCLEX countries where, where they hold the exams. Um, so NCLEX, I mean, CGFN is certification happened and when I arrived in New York I actually only had my CGFNS certificate that made me work um, able to work and be petitioned by my employer to New York and the terms there is I have to pass my NCLEX within six months so New York gave me that job and I was able to be petitioned and sponsored by my employer but right now, because NCLEX is available um, to Philippines, they are not using that as far as I know, correct? They're yeah. not using any more. Yeah, yeah. Certification program, I think, it's only two, two, or, two or three states that require mm-hmm. that. Yeah, so that's so. very important. Um, CGFNS, I'm not a representative of CGFNS, but this is something that a lot of people use um, worldwide. But uh, I believe there's a lot of other companies also with your certification or credentials verification and your visa screen. Um, so, there, you know, you, you have to research all those available resor- um, services for you guys. Right. So um, cred- that's credential evaluation. I think... <laughs> I think Kay said she'll leave at night. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Kay. <laughs> it's already time, Kay. <laughs> I know it's okay. We're we're good. I can hear you, but I will have to um jump off uh, at ten o'clock. So I uh, appreciate yeah, everybody yeah. here. I I probably will head out head out quicker than the two of you, but thank you so much for joining. Um, always remember your licenses will be your 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 health and your work and your license is your best investment without those two without your health and without your license your assets will all go down so i always keep that too in your in your heart and in your mind to have those um, licenses and your health good and active okay (laughs) yeah right right thank you Kay. last in first out (laughs) yeah (laughs) all right right Right. Okay, and, let me uh, have a real okay discuss about CE, CGFNS certification. It's my license, everyone. And someone sent me a message just now, mom. So I just let me make some work only with CGFNS. No, CGFNS is not a license. NCLEX is the license. CGFNS offers a lot of services aside from the certification exam. I had that before. But during my time, uh, like pay, I can o- I can also leave the country, uh, live to in work in the US with student and F S only and not endless. But nowadays, no, you must have an endless exam in order or be admission by a company. And uh, another service of student and F is CES, Prevention Evaluation Services. This screen very important or be part of your uh, immigration document. It will be asked during your interview. Now, uh, in order for you to have a visa screen, you must ask an English class. So this document, this requirement, they're interrelated and you cannot just go, you got the other one. So you have to really do a lot of uh, self-learning research. Uh, there's a lot of resources available and always uh, tune in with our nurse all personal blog. 
he shares a lot of reels, you know, uh, a lot of oath about it. Um, I, I will make notes. I, I will plan ahead for your goals and uh, get to know all of the services. If you need to print out the copy and highlight it in order for you to understand it, do it. And if, if you're so confused, there are companies that offer services, but of course, it will cost another money from your end. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. If that will work for you, uh, during my time as many all DIY, it saves me money, it gives me more uh, knowledge right now that I am sharing with other nurses. So, CES, CBS New York, it's also a certified government insurance or New York only. I do that also before. Um, this is green. I think most of the other services, right? For all from the CGFNS. Yeah, so again, CGFNS main two services that you need to know a certification program, which is the exam, like unless mm -hmm. it's a predictor that is not needed anymore. Only two or three states need it, it's yeah. obsolete. Go straight into prepare for the NCLEX. The other one is credential evaluation, which is to prove that your education is actually matching the U.S. academic mm -hmm. nursing program or because uh, there's different levels of nursing. There's vocational nursing, there's registered nursing or bachelor's degree nursing. There is um, CNAs. So they need to find out, is it matching? In the Philippines, it's easy because we only have RNs. In other countries, mm -hmm. they have multiple levels of nursing too. So it, that's a, what credential evaluation is doing. It's it matching to the RN program or are you like more like vocational or practical nurse? But CGFNS is not only the provider of credential evaluation, they're taking such a long time to process um, papers right now, but you have EREF, um, you have, um, What's this? Uh, Joseph and Silni. Silni right? yep. So there are many providers. Each boards of nursing would require you to do credential evaluation and they would have options. So CGFNS mm -hmm. is not the only provider. There are many providers, it depends on each board. And Anna, I was just looking at the compact license earlier, right? So I tried mm -hmm. to pull my own record from nurses.com mm -hmm. and it actually shows me the map of where I can practice oh, all that's the. Cool. All the blue colors I can practice. That includes a Y right there. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, um, and that's California. That's extra license. It's not compact. But mm -hmm. because I have multiple licenses plus a compact, it shows me what states I can practice. And you can do that as well if you have already passed your NCLEX. You can check in nurses.com mm -hmm. and it will actually tell you what states you're eligible to practice. That's my name right there. And it's a public record. So you can check it as well um because of the compact license we have a question from anna by the way we have viewers from um everlene is coming from kenya thank you anna is from cameroon i think anna said can the cgfns visa screen give you leverage to work in the u.s even without i'm sorry i have to go closer to the screen because i'm just using my phone <laughs> my, com my computer won't boot up today even, even without the out, NCLEX, for someone from cameroon I think Visa Screen um, would require NCLEX. Um, for you to get a Visa Screen, you need license or a proof or credential evaluation that your nursing program matches with the US, and you need an NCLEX, an English mm -hmm. exam. So without passing the NCLEX, you will not be able to get a Visa Screen. And Visa Screen is required for immigrant employment-based petition, only for E3 visas or E2. So that's it. Visa screen comes after the NCLEX. Do we have any more question? Um, Dr. Nurse Paul, um, I, I'm sorry, my question is not nursing. Uh, license nursing, nursing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I let, me it, let me read it. Let me read it. I just want to ask. <laughs> Call the friend, Paul. <laughs> yes, please. For good or nurse, Paul, I'm sorry for my question. It's not like something related. I just want to ask. If MFN acquired in in way in the US, thank you. Okay, so there are different levels of master's degree nursing here in the States. There are different focuses or majors. You can use your MSN because it's equivalent to the US. Mm -hmm. If you are doing administration or you're going as an academic uh, person or faculty, yes, you can use it. 
But there are MSN degrees that are advanced practice, like um, not CRNA because they're a doctorate now beginning 2022. Um, nurse practitioners, nurse midwives, clinical nurse specialists, nurse informaticists, those are highly specific focuses or specialty. You cannot use your MSN for that. You would have to take extra courses, post-credentials, or post-certificate um, credentials or post-certificate degrees. But if you're only gunning for administration or for academic positions, then MSN can be used. But you have to have it um, evaluated, credential evaluation again, to make sure mm -hmm. that it matches the U.S. master's degree. For the most part, it is because Philippines academic programs are patterned after U.S., not 100%, but we follow the American um, academic um, curriculum. So it is it is um, matching, yes. I didn't have to take an extra MSN here in the States because I already have my master's degree in the Philippines. I went straight mm -hmm. for the DNP doctorate program. Um, but my DNP did not only grant me a doctorate um, degree, it also allowed me to sit for the NP boards, which is advanced practice. Because my DNP, I took a dual major, um, major in education, nursing education, and nurse practitioner. So something like that. But yes, if you have master's degree outside US, you can use it in the US, but not for advanced practices. For advanced and practices, don't worry. You, have, you, have, you have to do extra courses. We will talk about that soon. That's going to be a one of our youth tour. Uh, yes. Yes, you know, actually. A lot of people are asking me about if my uh, master's uh, equivalent for US. And if we gonna waste my money and my time going to school, we will talk about that. We will discuss more about that. So stay tuned. Right. Right, the purple. Yes. And I think we're supposed to talk about NCLEX today, but uh, the actual NCLEX preparation. But I think we're just going to defer that to another show because mm -hmm. licensing itself in its, is its own beast. And there's so <laughs> many things that we need to know. Um, at the beginning of the show, guys, if you can watch again, because we just had a boost with viewership and uh right towards the last half and oh, okay. we, yeah we've had boost of viewership uh towards the first half of the show anna shared very vital information about application and licensing <laughs> processes so if you guys can please um re-watch the show share it and tag your friends on it we would really appreciate it so we can send the message out but like um what kay said your license is your investment. Yeah. Another thing that I want to add, aside from picking the right state of where you want to license and preparing for the NCLEX and considering all this credential evaluation is, once you get here to the US, can you please, everybody, get a liability insurance or professional well, liability yeah. insurance? Because since we were talking about your license as your investment, if they take out your license, then you're then you're done, right? You cannot work anymore. And that's why you want you wanted to go to the US to practice as a nurse. Um, it will be a very, very expensive mistake to not do that. Mm -hmm. uh, malpractice insurance is only a hundred a year. I'm not endorsing anyone. They're not paying me to do that. I'm just advocating for nurses to do that, right? And we will talk about that more too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in our future shows, yes. <laughs> We insurance, so yeah, yeah, insurance. So coming up, uh, the corner of all, let me, uh, uh, you know, encourage and everyone got knowledge of power. And yes. in order for you to save money, save time, save your effort, if you really want to come in the U.S. and work and fulfill your American dream, and let is a must. It's not an option. It's not negotiable. You must pay an end. It's a license. Uh, in order for you to work here, and if you're married, we have family, you can bring them, but you have to ask for NCLEX. And it will start by applying for NCLEX. And in order to be successful, we watch the show, take notes, take tune with the NPLA, read the corner for, uh, you know, real. Uh, on his TikTok and Kai is coming back. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. You guys are on. I thought you guys are done already, but good. <laughs> we are wrapping up. We are wrapping up. We are wrapping up. I'm giving my last wish to Kai. So, like what Kai said, and what our nerve all investment, investment, 
or now you're in the process of planning uh, by selling all this money, paying the board of nursing, eligibility, person view, and SBN, but later on, it's all worth it. So, back to you, Kay, or your wisdom. Oh, for me, um, if you are in nursing school, I would say, um, let's say you're spending $100,000, let's say, or, or let's say uh, $20,000 for nursing school, for your BSN. I want you as early as when you start your nursing program and you have plans to get opportunities outside your country, I would definitely recommend you increasing that budget for your nursing school. So that will include your budget for your for your local board exam, your English exam, and your exams to other countries because education is an investment. Mm -hmm. And coming from lower socioeconomic countries, it will be very beneficial and it's a very good investment if you're gonna use that also, you know, for for your family's sake to better off your life economically, to go to different places. And not only that, it boosts your experience. So one day you can just bring back your knowledge to where you came from and and better off your family and your generation's life. Um, again, always set a budget, not only for your nursing program, but as well as for your credentials, for your licenses. Those are all investment. And I can guarantee you, that investment will have a very good return of investment. It's like real estate. Real estate is an investment. Business is an investment. Your stock market is an investment. Your education is an investment. Your licenses are your investment. Anything that can return something that you value the most, those are called investments. So consider that as an investment. Right. Okay. And it's not a, not a nerf ball. And I guess I said, <laughs> I guess I said everything that I need to say, but um, preparation is key as with anything in life um, without clear preparation, uh, you will, you will not be able to succeed. NCLEX is the same way. Um, coming to the U S is the same way. You got to be prepared, write down everything that you need to do, be goal oriented as far as application process is concerned, as far as getting your ATTs is concerned, as far as choosing what state you want to apply for and work for. Those two things are not synonymous because you can apply for one state because it's easier to apply for that state, say, for example, New Mexico, but you want to work in Connecticut or you want to work in North Dakota, whoever wants to work there. I'm just I'm just kidding. But um, <clears throat> but um. <laughs> California. So um, be goal oriented and um, really write down your goals or things to do so you don't lose track. It can get overwhelming. That's why people solicit the help of processing centers because they're not just that detail oriented. If you're detail oriented, you know already that you like to write stuff or you like to put bullet points for your checklists, but be goal oriented. I think that that is a very good quality of nurses because we take care of um, complicated diseases of different human beings with different personalities. I think we are very good with setting up our goals, right? Um, that's one of the good characteristics of being a professional RN. So be goal oriented and it is overwhelming processing for the NFLEX until you pass the NFLEX. That's the first step. And then you go through the whole immigration processes that we talked about last week. That's another step. But if you set your goals, you can actually evaluate if you're getting closer to it, if you're deviating away from it, or if you need to switch your plans so you can stay on track. Very, very important. I'm big with or orienting yourself to your goals. And every now and then, um, you can evaluate if you're, if you're moving closer to it. But that's it. It's all about preparation. And that's why we're doing the DNP show to support you guys. But next week, we're going to do another show, Anna. We're going to do um, contracts and job offers. Ooh, I think this is Kate's favorite topic. Kate's favorite. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's very we will attractive. Like we will so like Kay, Kay will, open, the Kay will open the show. Yeah. I will open the show. My God, I have to make sure my location is not um, accessible. <laughs> right, right. It's a very important only... topic. 
you know, clinically mm-hmm. succeeding can be easily done by any nurse prepared, but succeeding in the street wise, um, not a lot of nurses actually are. Right, right, and right. nurses as being the number one trusted professional were not yep. really um oriented or well surrounded by people who will take advantage of us because our profession is very ethical and that makes us also uh vulnerable to predatory practice so next week yay contract yeah. and job offers Ooh, exciting <laughs> yeah I, I, it was an for, two hour two hour for, three hour for god oh my god especially for our, Im- for our immigrant nurses community because that's mm-hmm. you know we, we want to try to curb and prevent human trafficking abuse and bullying for our that immigrant happens. nurses that's why we need to talk about this guys what are the red flags and contracts and job offers what you need to look for what you what questions you should be asking mm-hmm. what are the specific items you're gonna need to look for in your contracts and job offers specific wordings that you need to avoid when should you sign and not sign a contract mm-hmm. so so many things this is gonna be fun please join us We'll see you next week. Uh, see you next Sunday, week. Sunday, same time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, my friend. All in play. Have a good day. Spend more time learning. Create what you, who you want with me and me a lot. Have a good day and good night, everyone. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye.